So, good morning again. Today we decided to talk about uh, armbar escapes. Uh, the one I'm usually advocating in the seminars because, let's say, it's, uh, it's missing or it's uh, underused. Uh, so we're going to talk about, uh, there's examples of uh, Vinnie Magalhaes and Fabrice Verdu. There's Gary Tonon and the Cron Gracie. There is uh, Sean Williams, Sean Roberts, sorry, or Sean Roberts, yeah. and uh, Keenan Cornelius. And uh, there's, so I think, a bunch of, a little couple, a couple of matches more. But you can see that people, people turn away. And uh, so I will just show it and I will talk about it a little bit and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, uh, so armbar. So when somebody armbars, usually, you know, people have those kind of defenses and they go under or over. But I would say you're already flat and if they get a double arm, that's already a big, like a minus, and I won't, I won't, uh, I don't want to give him a double arm. So what I do, what you see also in matches, they turn to the one side. You don't have to go actually very vertical, and but if they want to uh, now finish armbar, the shoulder is more up, and if they finish, go, it's a little bit harder. And now I know I can mess with my elbow. If the elbow is here, go finish. There's a little bit more harder, but if I turn my elbow away with the gi, it like, looks like magic because you don't see the elbow. Uh, twist, go hip up, and it's really, really hard. It's a go, 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 go. It doesn't work at all. So they start to usually bend the arm that way, right? And if I get my my arms here, I don't want to give him the armpit, the usual stuff, you know, keeping elbows close. Uh, so if they go twist, so what I do, I go to that side. So that's the kind of move. So what I do actively is I like to turn my thumb this way, I turn so its elbow is away from the body, body a lot, and then I shrimp backwards. With this, it's really hard to like move sideways, the friction is different, so here is the better. Shoulder is up, I even torque my shoulder, this, and now I'm shrimping and this helps to push him to the side, and even if they try to finish the armbar. So, going this, and now there's a multiple option, let's say, if they don't do anything, I turn the other side, baby bridge, uh, create space, fight for top. If they sit up, what they usually do, then don't start to reach because they reach back and then you lose underhook. So usually here, they sit up then underhook is there and now you bump, bump them forward with the knee and they kind of miss, miss their spot. And uh, so um, <laughs> you can start to fight for top. We'll see what happens. Maybe they run away, maybe they wizard you. So we never know. The ending is usually there's like five, four, five endings that we, we know so far. Uh, so one more time. So, and definitely the key is, yeah, the key is uh, being not flat. So if they go for armbar, I right away do this. So they have to control the wrist a lot, then everything kind of works. It's still harder here to uh, uh, do the armbar. It's still harder here, go, go, go. So I can mess with that elbow, I actively turn, and then I can actually turn away, and you know, ideally, if nothing happens, I can do the invert and get to the guard. So what, what usually people do for a, for a straight arm, they usually hitchhike, you know, that's the other side. So uh, I can teach a system where both those sides exist. The hitchhike side actually has jab cross game, and uh, I don't know what to call this actually. So that side has a jab cross uh, game in, in that sense that I can sit up. Uh, so example, if I do this and they turn to this side, so I can do those things. So keep the elbow still away and then you know go here. If they attack my back and everything else, that comes with the territory. But I'm away from the armbar and if they attack my back or even take the back or try, it's a good exchange because I just ex escaped the armbar, so definitely you have to know what to do. And if you even end up in the bottom after that scramble, it's fine because you just escaped the armbar. So, you know, in that context, all those things are you know, available and necessary to have. So don't I don't I don't mind those endings. But uh, an example, and from the from the S mount when you usually do it, uh, so I can really S mount is already here. Even if they take a Kimura grip. And then right away the thumb is down and I'm kind of guiding it. So if I do it from S-mount, or if Ronald does it for S-mount. So first of all, this is already a big mistake, yeah? So I have to see how much I give them because I don't like them being in my armpit. Anyway, 
So thumb, if, if they have even Kimura grip, whatever grip, so usually I catch this, so thumb is down, so I play like this, that I do this, and then I turn, because it's more risky and it's more fun, but usually the arm is here, and the timing is, you do this and a shrimp at one time. And then, they usually triangle the shoulder, but they try, be on the flat, and they try to triangle the shoulder and then you know, do the hip, and they try to do those things, so you have to manage that, and because if they do triangle, go armbar, so you have a chance of going over. So there's some bridging versions that if you get stuck, but you know, the torque and everything should keep the shoulder free. So definitely the idea of this is don't only do hitchhike, uh, watch those matches, get inspired, ask me, you know, when I'm traveling. So there's a definitely jab cross game and how to do, how to do uh, arm bar late escapes. And for me, this even, uh, at the moment, maybe because I, I don't like, I don't, I'm not practicing enough the hitchhike side, but this is easier for me, for a shoulder and stuff. So this is a little bit harder at the moment. But I know that, uh, let's say, Carrie Tonon and everybody, they, they usually, you see, those, you see those matches, they usually prefer this. But definitely watch those examples that I showed and you see people using it and, and even beginners sometimes just turn away and you have easier, a harder time to actually finish them because they're on their side. So, and um, I think other example would be also GSP and Dan Hardy, but they were doing a little bit like, like running man-ish thing and they weren't surviving here. So the evidence was there and I, I just, it kind of bothered me and so it took us kind of two, two years to maybe figure it out and we had a let's say breakthrough last August. Now it's almost a year ago. So we've been practicing that and have been sharing that to people and also with people and trying to do that in, in, in matches. So it's the very, very important thing is to just be on the side. Example, if somebody does it from the Kimura, let's say side control, and the usual combination is Kimura side, they have underhook. So first of all, you have to be always sideways, not flat, blah, blah, blah. So if they go for armbar, that if you are, another thing, if your position here is kind of bad, then they can start to step on your armpit and then there's triangles and stuff, step over, armpit, and then they separate and that's very dangerous. So what I do, we have a thing called, uh, like, let's, uh, let's just call the shrimp move, so I'm here, so there's no way they're gonna step here, yeah? So, and my head is also close, so if they step over my head, it's easier to catch this. And now if they go to armbar, and if they even get it, it's already happening, yeah? And now we have to figure out the ending, which way to get on top. So, and it's not like you can escape like 10 out of 10, but the theory is that only way to get good in arm bars is that you have to train arm bars against somebody that's very good in arm bar escapes. So usually you know that even in the arm bar, uh, usually in the Jiu Jitsu, uh, you see that all the time in a gym, people do this and they're already tapping. So the idea is that you, you take away my ability to finish and learn about the arm bars because let's say in, in uh, triangles, Ronald would suffer a lot and I've really learned everything till the, till the end about the triangles. But in arm bars, there's chances taken away and in competition you know that people don't tap so easily. So, how people usually tap because they don't have a ways to escape late armbar. So that's why I think the late armbar stuff is necessary and that direction we don't usually see is necessary. So I could have a, like if he does armbar to me, but he could have a possibility to become the best he can be doing armbars. And so, and also the fight in the end range with, with, with safeness. So I could experiment and it, it's not gonna be a, like a dangerous fight in that sense. So I really like that the the depth of jiu-jitsu, like how deep the rabbit hole goes. So we can be really like in a really uncomfortable situation and be calm and know where to tap and where to not tap. So it's really, really important. So uh, watch those matches. Uh, and when you see me around, ask me. I'm usually practicing those things in, in live sparring. So, so and uh, that's about it. So clean cut, so to speak. So talk to you next video.